Hello, my fellow unicorns. Today, we are going to continue our fairy tale journey. I'm going to read to you the fairy tale story. seemed at last they were to have one. Their house was in the countryside, and at the back was a little window that overlooked a beautiful garden planted with vegetables and flowers. But it was surrounded by a high wall, and no one dared go in there. standing by the window and looking down into the garden when she saw a bed of Rapunzel greens. They looked so fresh and lovely that she longed for some to eat. Each day, her longing increased until she became pale and sickly and would take no other food. Then her husband was alarmed and said, What's the matter, dear wife? Ah, she answered, if I cannot have the Rapunzel from the garden behind our house, I shall surely die. Her husband, who loved her, knew he would have to bring her the Rapunzel she wanted, no matter what the cost. At twilight, he climbed over the wall and into the witch's garden. He picked a handful of the Rapunzel and took it to his wife. She made a salad and ate it greedily, but she was still not satisfied. The taste was so wonderful that she had to move more of the Rapunzel at once. She wept and begged until her husband agreed to go back into the witch's garden. Again, in the twilight, he set out, but this time when he climbed over the wall, he saw the witch standing before him. How dare you come into my garden and steal my Rapunzel, she said angrily. You will have to suffer for it. The man was terribly afraid. Please take pity on me, he answered. I had to come here. My wife saw the Rapunzel from the window, and her longing for it is so great that she will die if she cannot have some. Then the rage left the witch's face, and she said, If what you say is true, I shall allow you to take away as much as you want, but on one condition. You must give me the child your wife is carrying. I will bring it up as my own, and care for it like a mother. In his fear, the man consented to everything, and when the baby was born, the witch came for her and gave her the name Rapunzel. As the years went by, Rapunzel grew to be the most beautiful child imaginable. When she was twelve, the witch took her away and shut her up in tower that stood in a forest. It had neither staircase nor doors, and only a little window high up in the wall. Each time the witch wanted to come in, she would stand below it and cry, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel 
had magnificent long hair as fine as spun gold. When she heard the witch's voice, she would unfasten her braids and twist them round a hook by the window. Then the hair would fall twenty feet down and the witch would climb up on it. Sometime later, it happened that the king's son was riding through the forest and passed close by the tower. As he did, he heard a song so lovely and clear that he stood still to listen. Rapunzel sang each day in her loneliness, and it was her voice that he heard. The king's son wanted to climb up to her and looked for a door to the tower, but none was to be found. He rode home, but his thoughts were hard by Rapunzel's sweet song, and he returned again and again to the forest to listen to it. Once, when he was hidden behind a tree, he saw a witch come to the tower and call out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Then Rapunzel lowered her hair, and the witch climbed up to her. If that is the ladder one must climb, too shall try it, he said to himself. And the next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. At once the hair was lowered and the king's son climbed up on it. Rapunzel was terrified, for she had never seen a man. But the king's son spoke to her gently and told her how beautiful her song had then she lost her fear, and when he asked if she would have him for her husband, she agreed. She could see that he was young and handsome, and she thought that he was kind. He will love me better than old Mother Gothel does, she said to herself, and she laid her hand in his. I will gladly go with you, she told him, but I do not know how I am to get down from this tower. I'll tell you what. When you come each evening, you must bring me a sheen of silk to twist into a ladder. And as soon as it is long enough, I will come down upon it, and we will ride away on your horse. The witch knew nothing until one day Rapunzel said to her, Tell me, Mother Gothel, why is it you are so much heavier to draw up than the young prince? Oh, you wicked child, cried the witch. I thought I had separated you from all the world, and yet you have deceived me. In her rage, she seized Rapunzel's beautiful hair, twisted it twice round her left hand, and cut it off with a pair of shears. When the hair lay upon the ground, she took poor Rapunzel into a vast wilderness and abandoned her there. In the evening, the witch returned to the tower and fastened the hair onto the hook by a window. She waited until the prince came and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, and then she lowered it. The prince climbed up, and there crouched beneath the window was the witch, who glared at him with rage and wickedness. Ah, she cried mockingly, you have come to fetch your the pretty bird has flown from her nest, and she can sing no more. Rapunzel is lost to you. Never shall you see her again. In his pain and grief, the prince leapt, leaped from the tower, and though he was not killed, his eyes were pierced by the thorns among which he fell. Weeping and lamenting, he roamed about blindly in the forest, and had nothing but roots and berries to eat. After many years of wandering alone, he at last came to the wilderness where Rapunzel lived in poverty and wretchedness. The prince heard a clear, sweet voice, and it seemed so familiar to him that he went toward it. Rapunzel knew him at once, and fell 
fell weeping upon his neck. Two of her tears wetted his eyes, and they grew clear again so he could see all that was before him. Then he took Rapunzel back to his kingdom, where they were greeted with great rejoicing, and they lived for a long time afterward in happiness and peace. So, so, this is a very interesting tale because to be learned. First, with Rapunzel's parents, they, it's, it's all about not being greedy and not gambling with things that you shouldn't gamble with, like selling your daughter. Is that compromise your morals? And then you have um, Rapunzel who has to be careful with who she trusts, but she's basically a captive, so. And then you have the prince who literally was blinded by love, but only true love made him see again. So, it's nice little lessons in there. I really enjoy the illustrations for this story because they are so vivid and colorful and just so beautiful. I mean, Rapunzel's mother looks so beautiful and long. And look, if you could see, she's kind of longing. That was really interesting. The composition of the two illustrations. It looks like she's looking at this one. And then the witch threatening Rapunzel's father. And then this is like. So beautiful, and you can see the prince climbing up the tower to see her. Uh, it's just the stuff of fairy tales, it's so beautiful. The landscape, the tower, it's just what a perfect illustration. love and they held on to it because they didn't let go of their love for one another the prince was able to see again and they were able to live happily ever after so it's really about holding on to dear love to true love don't let go it's wonderful I hope you enjoyed this story enjoyed this story. If you did, please subscribe to this channel as I don't advertise on any other social platform. I'm gonna do my best to upload videos every week, even multiple times a week. So, the next story that I'm gonna read to you is The Twelve Dancing Princesses. So, Stay tuned for that one. Hey 
Thank you guys so much for watching.